Translation refers to the overall process of mRNA-guided protein synthesis. Before diving into the mechanisms of translation, we first need to understand some key properties of the genetic code. The genetic code is composed of triplet codons, which are mature mRNA transcripts that can base pair with triplet of anticodon in transfer RNA or tRNA, which carries a specific amino acid. Genetic code is universal and shared by all organisms. Exceptions include minor variations in mitochondria, some bacteria, and some protists. The genetic code is non-overlapping, meaning that codons don't share nucleotides, except in bacterial phage 5174, which has highly overlapping genetic code. Genetic code is also unpunctuated, meaning that there is no gaps between codons. Genetic code is unambiguous. There are 64 codons, each code for either an amino acid or serves as a stop codon, except the stop codon UGA can also code for selenocysteine, while the stop codon UAG can also code for pyrolysine. The genetic code is degenerate. There are 20 amino acids encoded by 61 codons, which means that an amino acid may be specified by more than one codon. This is explained by the wobble hypothesis, which states that the third base in an mRNA codon can undergo non-Watson-Crick base pairing with the first base of a tRNA anticodon. Uracil can base pair with adenine and guanine. Guanine can base pair with cytosine and uracil, and inosine can base pair with adenine, uracil, and cytosine. Cytosine and adenine can only recognize codon bases of guanine and uracil respectively. Codon bias refers to the phenomenon that not all codons are used equally frequently. Some codons for a particular amino acid are used more frequently than others. There are two main types of genetic mutations, base pair substitutions and base pair insertions or deletions. There are three types of base pair substitutions. Missense mutation results in the translation of a different amino acid. Silent mutation results in the translation of the same amino acid. And nonsense mutation introduces premature stop codon. Insertions and deletions are additions or losses of nucleotide pairs in a gene. 1 to 2 base pair insertion or deletion could cause frame shift mutation, which alters the reading frame. 3 base pair result in one amino acid missing or adding, and doesn't result in frame shift mutation. The two key components that facilitate protein synthesis are ribosomes and transfer RNA. Ribosomes are macromolecular machines consisting of ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, and associated proteins that function to synthesize proteins. They are identified by their Zedberg values. In my previous video about RNA processing, I've covered the synthesis of both bacterial and eukaryotic ribosomes. The 70S bacterial ribosome is made of a 50S large subunit and a 30S small subunit whereas the eukaryotic 80S ribosome is made of a 60S large subunit and a 40S small subunit. Both ribosomes consist of three sites. A site stands for amino acyl tRNA binding site, which holds the tRNA carrying the next amino acid to be added to the chain. The P site stands for peptidyl tRNA binding site, which holds tRNA carrying the growing polypeptide chain. The E site stands for exit site, where discharged tRNAs leave the ribosome. tRNA or transfer RNAs serve as adapters in translating the language of nucleic acids into the language of proteins. A tRNA molecule consists of a single RNA strand of about 80 nucleotides long. It looks like a clover leaf when flattened into a single plane. Due to hydrogen bonds, tRNA actually twists and folds into a roughly L-shaped 3D molecule. Several characteristics contribute to tRNA's adapter function. The amino acid arm refers to the 3'N of tRNA, which contains the CCA sequence that can carry a specific amino acid is sterified by its carboxyl group to the 2' or 3' OH of the adenosine residue. The anticodon arm contains the anticodon sequence that is complementary to mRNA codon. The T arm contains three unique nucleotides. T stands for ribothymidine, Psi stands for pseudouridine, and C stands for cytosine. The D arm contains two dihydrouridine. Both D and T arms contribute to important interactions for the overall folding of tRNA molecules. The T arm also functions in interacting with the large subunit of ribosomal RNA. Translation involves four main stages. The first stage involves activation of amino acids in which amino acids are attached to 3' hydroxyl group of 3' terminal A residue of tRNA through an ester linkage by the enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase. 
First, the carboxyl group of amino acid attacks the alpha phosphate group of ATP, releasing pyrophosphate and forming 5' amino acyl AMP. The mechanism of the second step is different for two classes of amino acyl tRNA synthetase. For class 1 enzymes, 2' hydroxyl group of 3' terminal A residue of tRNA acts as nucleophile, attacking the carbonyl of amino acyl AMP, releasing AMP. The amino acyl group is then transferred to the 3' hydroxyl group by a transesterification reaction. For class II enzymes, the amino acyl group is transferred directly to the 3' hydroxyl group of the terminal adenylate of tRNA. The second stage of translation is known as initiation, in which mature mRNA binds to the ribosome and begins protein synthesis. During prokaryotic initiation, initiation factor 1, abbreviated as IF1, binds A site of 30S ribosomal subunit, preventing premature tRNA binding at this site. Initiation factor 3 then binds 30S subunit, preventing 30S and 50S subunits from combining prematurely. Then the mRNA binds the 30S subunit. Within the mature mRNA, a special sequence known as shine dalgarno sequence, AGG-AGG, base pair with 16S ribosomal RNA within the 30S subunit, and guides the initiating sequence 5'-AUG to the correct position at P site. Next, GTP-bound IF2 binds to the 30S subunit and recruits formal methionine tRNA. The anticodon of formal methionine tRNA base pairs with the star codon AUG of mRNA. GTP-bound to IF2 is hydrolyzed, triggering IF1, IF2, and IF3 to dissociate. The 50S subunit associates, forming the complete 70S ribosome, and the initiation complex, containing both the mRNA and the formal methionine tRNA. During eukaryotic initiation, eukaryotic initiation factor 1A, abbreviated as EIF1A, binds the A site of 40S subunit, preventing premature tRNA binding. EIF1A is the homologue of initiation factor 1 during bacterial initiation. EIF3 then binds 40S subunit, preventing 40S and 60S from combining prematurely. EIF1 then binds E site and recruits the ternary complex consisting of EIF2, GTP, and methionine tRNA, which binds to 40F subunit, along with GTP-bound EIF5B, which is homologous to IF2, forming the 43S pre-initiation complex. EIF4F and mRNA then binds the 43S pre-initiation complex. EIF4F consists of three components. EIF4G is a linker protein between EIF3 and EIF4E, which binds to the 5' cap of mRNA. EIF4G also binds to poly A binding protein at the 3' end of mRNA, circularizing the mRNA and facilitating translational regulation of gene expression. EIF4A is an ATP-dependent RNA helicase that removes secondary structure in mRNA to permit binding of 40S subunit. EIF4A helicase and EIF4B scan the bound mRNA starting at the 5' cap until an AUG codon within the COSAC sequence, which is the conserved basis around initiation codon, is encountered. EIF5 promotes GTPase activity in EIF2. EIF5B also hydrolyzes bound GTP, triggering EIF11A235B to leave. The 60S subunit associates, forming the ADS initiation complex. During elongation, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, matching tRNAs to each codon and catalyzing peptide bond formation, which continues until a stop codon is encountered. The elongation cycle involves three steps. In prokaryotic elongation, incoming amino acyl tRNA binds to GTP-bound EF2 complex. Amino acyl tRNA EF2 GTP complex then binds to A site of 70S initiation complex. EF2 hydrolyzes GTP and dissociates from 70S ribosome. EF2 GTP complex is regenerated by EFTs, which is a GDP GTP exchanger. The second step is known as peptide bond formation. 23S rRNA ribozyme, located within the 50S large subunit, contains peptidyl transferase activity. The new amino acid on the A site acts as a nucleophile, attacking the elongating peptide, forming the peptide bond. The peptidyl tRNA form in the A site, and the now uncharged tRNA remains in the P site. During the last step, translocation, GTP-bound EFG binds to the ribosome. GTP hydrolysis facilitates translocation. 
First, the ribosome moves one codon towards 3'N of the mRNA. EFG GDP mimics EF2 tRNA, and peptidyl RNA completely shifts to P site. A site is now open for incoming amino acyl tRNA. The uncharged tRNA dissociates from E site. This cycle of repeating three steps continues to add new amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain. In eukaryotic elongation, GTP-bound eukaryotic elongation factor 1A serves as the carrier of incoming amino acyl tRNA, binding to the ADS ribosome. GTP hydrolysis by EEF1A triggers dissociation from the ADS ribosome, and eukaryotic elongation factor 1B serves as a GTP-GDP exchanger restoring the GTP-bound EEF1A complex. Next, the 28S rRNA ribozyme within the 60S large subunit contains peptidyl transferase activity, which catalyzes the formation of a peptide bond between the incoming amino acid and the existing peptidyl tRNA. During translocation, eukaryotic elongation factor 2 binds to the ribosome, hydrolyzing GTP to facilitate translocation of peptidyl tRNA to P site and the dissociation of uncharged tRNA from E site. Translational termination is stimulated by the stop codons UAA, UAG, and UGA. In prokaryotic termination, release factor 1, abbreviated as RF1, recognizes UAG and UAA whereas release factor 2 recognizes UGA and UAA. RF1 or 2 mimics tRNA, inducing peptidyl transferase to transfer the growing polypeptide to a water molecule rather than another amino acid. Hydrolysis of ester linkage between the nascent polypeptide and the tRNA in the P-site releases the completed polypeptide. Release factor 3 triggers dissociation of mRNA, uncharged tRNA, and release factors 1, 2, and 3. During ribosome recycling, the large subunit of ribosome dissociate from the small subunit. Ribosome recycling factor, abbreviated as RRF, along with initiation factor 3 and GTP-bound elongation factor G, facilitates the dissociation of 50S from 30S and mRNA. Initiation factor 3 30S complex is ready to begin another cycle of translation. In eukaryotic termination, a single release factor, eukaryotic release factor 1, recognizes all three stop codons and binds to the A site. Eukaryotic release factor 3 triggers the dissociation of mRNA, uncharged tRNA, and eukaryotic release factor 1 and 3. ATP binding cassette E1, abbreviated as ABCE1, serves as the ribosome recycling factor, facilitating the dissociation of the 60S subunit from the 40S subunit, accompanied by ATP hydrolysis. There are two mechanisms that ensure the fidelity of translation. Amino acyl tRNA synthetases contain proofreading activity that ensure the attachment of the correct amino acid. A second genetic code including 10 or more specific nucleotides are also involved in discriminating tRNAs by its specific amino acyl tRNA synthetase. During elongation, elongation factor 2 in bacteria and eukaryotic elongation factor 1A which catalyzes the binding of incoming amino acyl tRNA, proofreads codon and anticodon interaction. Incorrect amino acyl tRNAs dissociate from A site. Now I'm going to summarize the energy cost during translation. Many high energy phosphate compounds are expended during translation to maintain proper alignment between each new codon in the mRNA and its associated amino acid at the growing end of the polypeptide which permits very high fidelity of translation. The energy cost to attach a new amino acid in prokaryotes include two ATP spent by activation of amino acid by amino acyl tRNA synthetase, one GTP spent by initiation factor 2 that promotes dissociation of initiation factors, two GTP spent during elongation by elongation factor 2 to bind incoming amino acyl tRNA to ribosome, and EFG, which facilitates translocation of ribosome to the next codon. And finally, an additional molecule of GTP is spent by EFG during ribosome recycling, which facilitates the dissociation of the 50S large subunit from the 30S small subunit. For eukaryotes, activation of amino acids also requires two ATP. Initiation requires two GTPs and one ATP. The GTPs are hydrolyzed by eukaryotic initiation factor 2 and eukaryotic initiation factor 5b, which promote the dissociation of other initiation factors. 
The ATP is spent by EIF4A, which is the RNA helicase that is part of EIF4F, removing secondary structure in mRNA to permit binding to the 40S subunit. Two GTPs are spent during elongation. By eukaryotic elongation factor 1A, which binds incoming amino acyl tRNA to ribosome, as well as eukaryotic elongation factor 2, which facilitates translocation of ribosome to the next codon. Finally, one ATP is spent during termination by ABCE1, which serves as a ribosomal recycling factor, facilitating the dissociation of the large subunit from the small subunit. Translation can be disrupted by various chemical compounds. Low concentration of streptomycin can cause misreading of genetic code in bacteria, whereas high concentrations can inhibit initiation. Ricin found in castor bean can inactivate 60S large subunit of eukaryotic ribosome by depyranating a specific adenosine in the 20S rRNA. The antibiotic tetracycline can block A site during bacterial elongation preventing the binding of incoming amino acyl tRNAs. Diphtheria toxin facilitates ADP ribosylation of eukaryotic elongation factor 2, inactivating translocation during elongation. Chloramphenicol can block peptidyl transferase of the 70S subunit, inhibiting peptide bond formation in bacteria, mitochondria, and chloroplasts. Whereas cyclohexamide blocks peptidyl transferase activity of ADS eukaryotic ribosome. Pyromycin resembles the 3' end of amino acyl tRNA and binds ribosomal A site. Pyromycin participates in peptide bond formation but doesn't engage in translocation, terminating polypeptide synthesis in both bacteria and eukaryotes.